So you want to make Belizean meat pies, but you're afraid that the dough won't come out right. Well, fear no more because I'm going to show you how to make a simple three or four ingredient pie dough that's going to come out right the first time and it's going to be flaky and delicious. Welcome to the Bear Panther Show. If you're looking for authentic Belizean recipes, then you're in the right place. My name is Barbara and this is Cooking Made Simple. Let's start by measuring the flour for the pie dough. So this is some all-purpose flour that I have in my bucket. Notice how I measure it, right? I shovel some up loosely and then scrape off the excess with the flat knife and then dump it into my bowl. So we're gonna need four cups of all-purpose flour, some cold ice water, so let me get some ice cubes from the fridge. And then here are the rest of the ingredients that we're gonna need for the pie dough. I have my flour here. We're gonna need shortening, butter, if the butter is salted, don't add any salt. If it's not, then add a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna need 3 fourths cup of butter and 3 fourths cup of shortening. So I have a 3 fourths cup, which is the green cup, but for the other measurement, I'm gonna use a half cup plus a quarter cup. So if you notice, the butter is room temperature and not cold from the fridge. That's 3 fourths of a cup. Now let's measure out the shortening. Shortening doesn't melt like butter, so you have to be very careful that you're not overpacking it into the measuring cups. Because if you do that, your pie dough is not going to be flaky, it's going to be brittle. It's going to be hard for you to handle it, okay? So this is the quarter cup. Now let me dump my butter in here. Next is shortening. This is a three-fourths of a cup. If you want to do a vegan version of this um, pie dough, just replace the butter with more shortening. So the shortening would be one and a half cups, all right? Get it worked in with your fingers and then add the ice water very slowly. Remember I told you it was gonna be easy, right? Very easy to do. Just go very slowly. We don't want to get it over wet because then you're going to have to add more flour and then that's going to mess up the flakiness of your pie dough again. Let me get some more water. See how slowly I'm going? Okay, let me dump it out. Start clumping it together. We're not kneading, okay? Let me wash my hands and dry them off because it makes kneading a lot, well not kneading, it makes messing with dough a lot easier. So just gonna pick up all the stuff off the counter and then we're gonna do this fancy thing here, Fraser or frise. I really should look up the way that word is pronounced. It's a French word for what you do to the dough right here when you're messing with pie dough. Okay, I feel like it's smooth. So let me go ahead and press it down and then get some parchment paper because this has to go on the fridge for at least 15 minutes. 30 minutes would be better, but if you're in a rush, you can use it at 15 minutes, okay? We're not gonna be in a rush today though because we still have to make the meat or cook the meat. Let's put it in the fridge. Goodness, I can't find space, guys. So now let me go ahead and grease my cupcake trays. I just greased it lightly with some butter and I'm adding some all-purpose flour because we have to grease and flour the tins so that the um, pies will come out easily. Work it around like this, dump it out on the counter, get the other one going. We're gonna get 24 meat pies. Yes, we're gonna have enough to share. Let me scrape up my excess flour and reuse it for the next tray, okay? This is the spice that we're gonna use on the meat today, guys. I already have it mixed up. I used garlic powder, onion powder that's missing because it's done, some powdered ricotta, you can replace that for paprika, salt, black pepper, chili powder, cayenne, and you can put anything else you desire, but this is what I like in the meat pies, all right? Some diced up onion, some cilantro that's picked and washed from the stem, ground beef that's 73 27 we're gonna need two pounds so I'm gonna cut off a pound here and put that back in the freezer I'm gonna let my pan heat up first let me light the fire 
and then when the pan is hot I'm going to go ahead and squeeze the two pound tube of ground beef into the pot. So a lot of people ask me why do I use this kind of ground beef that's in a tube right? Because it's cheaper. So what you want to do is attack it right away with a wooden spoon or nylon spoon because we have to make sure that the meat is loose because if it starts clumping up together it's not going to work for the meat pies alright so I'm using a metal potato masher but I'm not twisting and turning it in my nonstick pan alright I'm just squishing so you can't walk away you can't go watch TV you can't call your friend on the phone you have to stay here and just watch this meat back to the spoon, adjust the fire if it's too hot. Back to the masher again. Now my bracelet's burning me, so I have to turn it out to the top of my arm. And then squish away. Meanwhile, the meat is getting brown but I haven't added any spices or anything like that yet, okay? I'm spending a lot of time on this part for you guys because I want to show you the importance of just staying here and working this meat so that it can become loose, kind of like the way Sloppy Joe looks. Squish away. And you may be asking, well, can I do it with ground turkey? Yes, you can, but you have to do the same thing to it. And it's a little bit harder to deal with ground turkey because it's more like packed tight. Well, at least the one in the tube is. So I'm gonna keep working this over here. Somebody even said they were gonna try it with a vegan meat. So that's why I told you guys earlier how to make the dough vegan. Squish away. And then move it around so it won't burn. All the meat is brown now. So it's time to start adding things in a little while here. We're going to add the onions first, but let's squish some more. Okay, let me go ahead and grab the diced onions. Well, it's half of a large onion, okay, half of a large white onion. Here we go. And then get it worked in. And then next we're going to add the cilantro. Remember, no stems. Let me get this worked in, guys. And I've decided that I want to put some jalapenos. Normally, Belizeans will put habanero, but that's too hot for me, so I'm going to stick with jalapeno. Let me cut this whole pepper open and remove the seeds. The seeds make the pepper hotter, but the seeds also messes with me. So let me get them out. I think I'm going to do like three to four large peppers, cut them into small bite-sized pieces and then dump them into the pan. I love the smell of um, jalapenos. What about you guys? I'll get this worked in and then get the spice. Well, let me put some water first because I don't want my meat to burn. Now when we mix up the spice, we put less salt because we always want to adjust for salt later in the pan, okay? So I'm going to taste later and adjust accordingly. And when we blended the spice, we put like a teaspoon of everything. More water, not too much. Oh, it's looking good now, isn't it? Look at all this grease. And we're not going to throw off any of this grease, all right? We're going to need cornstarch later on. We need this grease to make these pies. Let me go ahead and take out my dough because the dough has to come to a little bit of a room temperature so we can start rolling it out, right? So I'm adding yet a little bit more water to my pan. Now I could shut off the pan at this point and deal with the dough, but I'm just going to let it continue cooking behind me and add water accordingly. So let me cut my dough into four. I'm gonna cut it into two first and then cut this in half. Set everything else aside 
because I'm going to knead out this one piece. Well, not knead, roll. Roll with the rolling pin. Let me put some flour. Relax, relax dough. Sometimes I have to talk to the dough, you know, just relax. And then I'm just going to roll. So we have to roll it to one eighth of an inch thick. Exactly how thick that is, it's pretty thin, guys. We have to go a lot more here. Flour accordingly. Now remember that this dough is very forgiving, all right? So you can mess up a lot and it won't get stiff on you. I got this recipe from Joshua's godmother's mom way back in 1986. <laughs> so I measured. Now I'm going to roll it up on itself like this very loosely. Don't, you know, don't tighten it. And then drop it over the pan like this very loosely. Grab the next tray and push. This is one way of doing it. Get a little knife and just cut it apart and then start shaping these um, bottoms, I guess, into the, the little slots, into the sections. Don't let it slip and fall down into the pan, okay? You want enough that when you put the lids on, you can squish the lid onto something. So let's taste. Put some more water and taste. I put a little bit more salt and now it's perfect. Now let's take care of the other tray. You can also do it like this. Cut off a little piece and make it into a ball and then roll it out flat. Again to an eighth of an inch thick. And then just go ahead and put them individually into the tray like this. Whichever way you find easiest for you is what you're going to do. This is the way I happen to like. Just to put them individually rather than use the tray like I did just now. Now Joe's going to come over here over my shoulder and show you point of view. Roll it out. Put it in here. Take off any excess. And you can just pinch it off. then use a little piece of the dough to take out any air bubbles. Now remember you can still use the tray that you've um, put the bottoms in already to go ahead and press into this one if that's the way you want to do like this. See? Spread it out and press like this. You can still use this one for that. Just showing you different methods. Now we're going to go ahead and make the lids. So I've cut the next half of the dough into half. So this is a quarter. Flour my counter really well. And we're going to roll again, very thin. Now I don't mind if my lids are kind of thick when I'm eating these pies, but I don't like the bottoms to be thick. Use a big mouth drinking glass or tumbler. Let me get this first one up here very gently with a knife. Let me set this aside though and go back to the meat for a second because it's time for me to add the cornstarch slurry. So two tablespoons of cornstarch with a little bit of water. We're gonna add this to the pan to thicken the gravy, okay? I used to do flour paste but I found out the cornstarch works a little bit better. It has to be very thin, all right? You don't need a strainer or anything, just pour it in and right away it's getting thick. Let me give it a stir and yes, I'm going to need more liquid because we need a lot of the gravy so that when we bake the pie, it doesn't come out dry. The, I mean the meat doesn't come out dry, okay? Pour some more water in. And now Joe has stepped in with a nylon potato masher because he still feels like it needs to be more loose. I think it's ready, so let's go ahead and start loading the meat into the pie shells. I'm going to use a soup spoon and just start shoveling one spoonful at a time into each pie shell. And I'm going to do this for all 24 
before I come back around and start eyeballing which one needs more. Okay? We don't want to overfill them, but we don't want them to be too empty either. So in the beginning, just go ahead and lift the lids up and loosely put them on top. So this first piece of the pie dough will give me all 12. You want to get a little fork and just go ahead and squish the lids to the bottom of the shell. And take your time to make them look pretty if you want to present them. If not, if you're in a rush, just make them look rough. Okay. Now I still have to do the lids for the other set, okay? So I'm going to stop and go take care of that first. So this is the last piece of dough. Remember, I cut the dough into four. Let me get one egg to make egg wash. Add a little bit of water and then I'm going to lightly brush this on the top. My oven is coming up to temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me go ahead and put both of them on the top shelf. Set the timer for 60 minutes and then we're going to come back and check on them. The rest of the dough I'm going to set in the fridge because the kids can use this another day to make some type of ham and cheese type pocket or something like that. One hour later, not quite. They can go another 10 minutes. 10 minutes later. Mm-hmm. They're crunchy enough. And we want to get them out right away. We don't want them to sit here and sweat. In the tins all right we're doing everything to make sure these pie doughs are not soggy or the pies now they're fully made pies now get them all out and then I'm gonna run outside to take my thumbnail pictures 24 I hope I can make it past Joe yes I did <laughs> Ooh, look Enjoy guys. The books are here. Take a look at the book cover guys. So let's take a look at the inside.